Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please. Welcome to the Church and McKee Arts Center on the campus of Potomac State College of West Virginia University. State fire marshal regulations require that we point out the emergency exits in our auditorium. Please note the exits to the front, sides, and rear of the auditorium should the hall need to be evacuated in an emergency. There are restrooms and water fountains in the lobby of the theater for your comfort and convenience. Please, at this time, turn off your cell phones and pagers so that they will not interfere or disrupt this program. We welcome your attendance at this event and look forward to seeing you again.
Thank you, Mr. Wilson and the Kaiser High School Concert Band. Good morning. I'm Dr. Matt Ravenscroft, principal of Kaiser High School, and it is my honor to welcome you to the 79th Jonah Edward Kelly Award Ceremony at Church McKee Arts Center on the campus of Potomac State College. We're here today to honor the memory and sacrifice of KHS alumnus Jonah Edward Kelly and to bestow upon one of our seniors, Drew Matlick, Logan Rotruck, or Jack Stanislazic, with an award in his namesake. This morning, we will hear about his sacrifice in Europe during World War II, but like thousands of other GIs, he was a high school student like you, not long before he died serving our country. However, unlike his peers, when the opportunity came to be a selfless leader and do what was right and necessary to save others, he seized the opportunity. One theme that will be evident from his life as an athlete and soldier is his leadership. It was not born out of a desire for recognition or glory, but from a deep sense of duty and responsibility to his fellow soldiers. He understood that true leadership is not about rank or authority, but about service and sacrifice. Those traits can be seen in our three nominees and countless other Kaiser High School students. Staff Sergeant Kelly's actions on the battlefield serve as a reminder that leadership is not confined to the halls of power or the boardrooms of corporations. It can be found in the most unlikely of places among ordinary individuals thrust into extraordinary circumstances. Leadership is sacrificial, it always does what is right, and it moves and impacts others to do the same. Selfless leadership improves families, schools, businesses, churches, and entire communities. Staff Sergeant Jonah Edward Kelly, Kaiser High School, class of 1941, was a leader. Representing the West Virginia Army National Guard, Sergeants First Class Travis Orange, Dustin Durst, Shannon Justice, and Jordan Perano will now present our colors, followed by the national anthem from our Kaiser High School Concert Band and Pledge of Allegiance by Kaiser High School Senior Wyatt Murray. Please stand.
Could you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Today, April 12, 2024, we celebrate our hometown hero, Jonah Edward Kelly. What separates a hero from all others who live and breathe upon this earth? What constitutes a hero? What are those qualities or characteristics that set him apart from his contemporaries? Perhaps the great philosopher and scientist Aristotle said it best when he explained about a tragic hero that one would find in literature. He said that the tragic hero was a man who was larger than life. If he were in a crowd, one would notice him. If, he had, if someone had a need or problem, he would answer it. If he had a belief system, he would never compromise those beliefs. Not under the threat of peer pressure, not under the threat of ridicule not under the threat of the loss of his own life. According to Aristotle, one of the qualities that identifies the tragic hero is hamartia, the decision that made, the hero makes about his life that ultimately brings about his demise. Jonah Edward Kelly grew up in Kaiser. He sang in the church choir at Grace United Methodist Church next to RG's in Kaiser. He was the president of his church youth group. His dedication to the Lord was evident. Ed Kelly was also deeply committed to his family. In the winter, he would walk down Water Street to provide his grandmother enough coal to keep her warm during that day. Ed was a young man of honor and commitment, reared on the values and teachings of his mother, father, and his church. In high school, he was a dedicated member of the K Club and the High Y Club, like our Key Club besides the fact that he participated in football and basketball. During summer, Ed worked in the produce department of the local American grocery store. After he graduated from Kaiser High School in 1941, Ed attended Potomac State College where he majored in physical education and played football for the college. In the middle of pursuing his education, he decided to join the Army to serve his country. He was inducted into the Army on March 3, 1943 at Camp Butner, North Carolina, where he later became the heavyweight boxing champion of the 311th Regiment. But the world was in turmoil, and like millions of boys his age, Ed marched off smiling and making plans for after he returned from the war. Probably like other young soldiers, he looked forward to his first real battle with a mixture of anticipation and fear. Ed Kelly rose to the rank of sergeant, and like thousands of others, he commanded a group of his own men. On the night before January 31st, 1945, Ed Kelly relieved a young private who was on night watch, yet Sergeant Kelly himself had very little sleep. Ed Kelly was 21 years old when he died for his country. While dying to save his men, Ed died like thousands of others by the cruel rake of a machine gun on January 31st, 1945 in Kesternick, Germany. 
Jonah Edward Kelly's body was interred in the Margarton U.S. Military Cemetery at Maastricht, Holland, where it would stay for four years, far from a mother, father, or his sister's grief, and far from the mourning of a small town in West Virginia. On September 5th, 1945, Ed's parents traveled to Fort Hayes, Ohio, where his father, Jonah, accepted the Congressional Medal of Honor given posthumously to his son. Of the approximately 13,000 men in his division, Jonah Edward Kelly was the only recipient of this honor. In 1948, Jonah Edward Kelly's remains were returned to Kaiser. The Reverend Charles Albright of Stivenville, Ohio, a former chaplain of the 78th Lightning Division, officiated his funeral. Jonah Edward Kelly possesses the qualities of a hero. Reverend James H. Brown, Jr., a former pastor of Grace United Methodist Church in Kaiser, wrote, Sergeant Kelly was a typical American lad, the type that one loved to have around and the type that was the life of the party. He was also the type of lad who always kept his faith in God. These qualities belong to a hero. Our tragic hero who made the choice to defend his country and ended up paying the ultimate price for our freedom. Today, we celebrate the 79th anniversary of the sacrifice Jonah Edward Kelly made on January 31, 1945 in Kesternick, Germany. The Medal of Honor is the nation's most prestigious military decoration that may be awarded to recognize American Armed Forces personnel. The Army, Navy, Marines, Air Force, Space Force, and Coast Guard who have distinguished themselves by acts of valor in combat. The Medal of Honor is the United States' highest award for military valor in combat. Over 150 years have passed since its inception and the meaning behind the medal has never tarnished. Etched within are the very values that each recipient displayed in the moments that mattered. Bravery, courage, sacrifice, integrity, a deep love of country, and desire to do what is right. Jonah Edward Kelly of Kaiser, West Virginia, received this medal for conspicuous gallantry and intrepidity at the risk of his own life. His Congressional Medal of Honor citation reads, Staff Sergeant Jonah Edward Kelly, 311th Infantry Regiment, displayed conspicuous gallantry in action on 3031, January 1945, at Kesternick, Germany. In charge of leading squad of Company E, he heroically spearheaded the attack in furious house-to-house -house fighting. Early on 30 January, he led his men through intense mortar and small arms fire and repeated assaults on barricaded houses. Although twice wounded, once when struck in the back, the second time when a mortar shell fragment passed through his left hand and rendered it practically useless. He refused to withdraw and continued to lead his squad after hasty dressings had been applied. His serious wounds forced him to fire his rifle with one hand, resting it on rubble or over his left forearm. To blast his way forward with hand grenades, he set aside his rifle to pull the pins with his teeth while grasping the missiles with his good hand. Despite his handicaps, he created tremendous havoc in the enemy ranks. He rushed one house, killing three of the enemy and clearing the way for his squad to advance. On approaching the next house, he was fired upon from an upstairs window. He killed the sniper with a single shot and similarly accounted for another enemy soldier who ran from the cellar of the house. As darkness came, he assigned his men to defensive positions, never leaving them to seek medical attention. At dawn the next day, the squad resumed the attack, advancing to a point where heavy automatic and small arms fire stalled them. Despite his wounds, Sergeant Kelly moved out alone, located an enemy gunner dug in under a haystack and killed him with rifle fire. He returned to his men and found that a German machine gun from a well-protected -pro position in a neighboring house still held up the advance. Ordering his squad to remain in comparatively safe positions, he valiantly dashed into the open and attacked the position single-handedly through a hail of bullets. He was hit several times and fell to his knees when within 25 yards of his objective, but he summoned his waning strength and emptied his rifle into the machine gun nest, silencing the weapon before he died. 
The superb courage, aggressiveness, and utter disregard for his own safety displayed by Sergeant Kelly inspired the men he led and enabled them to penetrate the last line of defense held by the enemy in the village of Kesternick. The Lightning Division in World War II served this country with valor and distinction. As Ed Kelly's name and fame circulated, many of Ed's fellow soldiers have traveled annually to Kaiser, West Virginia to attend our ceremony and award program established in 1946 at our high school. Many of these veterans participated in the events by giving testimony of Kelly and Kesternick. We normally take the time to recognize those members of the 78th Lightning Division for not only their sacrifice to our country, but for their continued attendance at our program every year. Unfortunately, our favorite 78th Lightning Division member, Stuart Brandau, was unable to make the trip from Woodbridge, New Jersey, to Kaiser this year. Vito, his driver and friend, broke his femur and had to stay with family on the West Coast. Stu is unable to travel without Vito, and we will miss both of these men greatly at our festivities this year. We love you, Stu, and your absence is definitely felt among all of us that love and support this program. It is not too late for all of us who love America to say thank you to the dedicated men and women who fought for our country and for their legacy of strength and tremendous courage that will live on continually for generations to come. Your service and sacrifice for the preservation of our country is why we enjoy the privileges and rights of our American freedom and liberty. Would all active, reserve, retired, and newly enlisted military personnel please rise. Let us show our appreciation and gratitude for the sacrifices these men and women have made and continue to make. Thank you, you may be seated. Every year since 1946, we celebrate Ed Kelly's legacy to us with three young men and over 100 predecessors who wear the medallion and stand with pride because they are a part of a most sacred and privileged membership in the Kelly Society. Would all past candidates and winners please rise. Our school and community are so lucky to have young men represent all aspects of Jonah Edward Kelly. We are grateful that this society helps to keep the memory of Ed Kelly alive. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank you, you may be seated. Jonah Edward Kelly was and is a hero. Because of his heroism, we annually chose three young men from Kaiser High senior class who we think possesses qualities which Ed Kelly displayed throughout his brief life. These three young men will be carrying on the legacy of Jonah Edward Kelly, a young man with a sense of commitment towards his family and with a sense of purpose for his destiny. Ed Kelly gave his life for his country as his last full measure of devotion. Today, we honor the three senior males who best hold the ideals and qualities that Staff Sergeant Jonah Edward Kelly possessed. The winner, like Ed Kelly, has to be an all-around American boy, scholar, and athlete. He is expected to excel in scholastic standing where the young man must display at least a 2.0 grade point average. Nominees must be eligible for sports three of their four years at Kaiser High School by participating in either football or basketball. These two sports are identified because Ed Kelly participated in these sports while attending our high school. Other areas that are considered in the candidates and ultimately the winner are citizenship, high morals, sportsmanship, church attendance, community and country loyalty, integrity, sobriety, and the observance of the law. The young man should display leadership and patriotism as well. Moreover, the candidate should demonstrate courtesy and manners and be sincere in his work and endeavors. Our winner is selected from the three nominees after writing an essay. The winner is chosen by a special anonymous committee. 
Let us re review our three candidates before the winner is announced. As you view our screen, you will see our first nominee, Drew Kent Matlick. Drew's parents are Darren and Amber Matlick. Drew holds a grade point average of 4.28 and was on the honor roll every semester since he was a freshman. He has participated in golf and basketball all four years at our high school and has served as captain of the golf team in his junior and senior year. In basketball, Drew was captain as a senior. Drew made all PVC for golf all four years. He was all state for golf and won a state championship. In addition, Drew has been a member of the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, where he serves as president, Key Club, and the FFA for all four years. He also participated in the Chick-fil-A Leadership Academy. Drew was inducted into the academic, math, technical, and science honor societies. While holding a part-time job at Polish Pines Golf Course as a groundskeeper, Drew helped the community pr by participating in numerous service projects. Thanksgiving Food Drive Committee, the Angel Tree Stocking Committee, the Wounded Warrior Project, Reading to School Age Children for Energy Express, and Operation Christmas Child with his church, Gospel Life Baptist Church. Drew plans to attend Potomac State College after graduation and major in wildlife and fisheries resources. The people who have inspired Drew the most in his life are his parents, Darren and Amber. Drew emphasizes the importance of watching his parents' work ethic and determination to provide for his family. The second nominee is Logan Colin Rotruck. Logan's parents are Colin and Amber Rotruck. Logan holds a cumulative grade point average of 4.29. For all four years, Logan has played football, wrestled, and played baseball for Kaiser High School. He was the captain of all three teams. Logan was named all PVC for football, wrestling, and baseball. He attended the state tournaments for wrestling and baseball. Logan is also academic all-state. He was awarded the National Guard Leadership Award. Logan participates in many clubs and activities at KHS, including Key Club, where he serves as president, Kaiser Crazies, Student Council, and the Chick-fil-A Leadership Academy. He has been on honor roll for all four years and is a member of the Academic, Math, and Science National Honor Societies. Logan serves as the vice president of the Academic Honor Society. Logan was the class president his freshman year and was picked to attend Boys State last summer. As a volunteer, Logan has helped organize the Red Cross Blood Drive and has served as a committee member for the Angel Tree Stockings. He has participated in helping clean up the plaza at the high school and volunteered to help at the primary school. Logan attends Grace United Methodist Church. In the future, he hopes to pursue a degree in civil engineering by attending First Potomac State College while playing baseball. Logan named both of his parents, Colin and Amber, as his biggest inspirations. Logan says they pushed him to be his absolute best and to lead through example. Last but not least, we present to you our third nominee, Jack Ernest Stanislawczyk. Jack's parents are Jeffrey and Allison Stanislawczyk. Currently, Jack holds a cumulative grade point average of 4.27. He has participated in football, basketball, and track and field all four years of high school. Jack has served as captain his senior year in football and basketball. He also served as team captain of his track team in his junior and senior year. Jack was a state champion of the 4x400 meter relay team in 2023 for track and field. Jack participates in numerous clubs and activities. He is an active member of Key Club, Student Council, Kaiser Crazies, Drama Club, and Skills USA. He served in the capacity of the Chick-fil-A Leadership Academy. Jack also belongs to the National and Math Honor Societies. He currently serves as president of the Academic National Honor Society. Jack attended Mountaineer Boys State and was awarded the Dave Ferris Award. Jack is an active member in his youth group at his church. Jack belongs to two churches, Assumption Catholic Church and St. Peter's Church. His volunteer work in community service includes helping with the youth track meet and the youth football camp. He has completed numerous service projects with his church youth group, including Operation Shoebox Christmas and numerous food drives. Jack has also helped with painting and yard work at the Kaiser High School and graded tests for Math Field Day. His future goals after high school include attending Fairmont State University, where he will major in education and play football. Jack's biggest inspirations are both his parents, Jeffrey and Allison. They have taught him to be hardworking, determined, and successful, all while still being himself and having fun. 
Through each young man that represents Jonah Edward Kelly and his ideals, Kaiser is very blessed. Each candidate deserves the honor of this award. The bravery, humility, and sacrifice of Jonah Edward Kelly earned him much recognition posthumously. For his valor in battle, the nation honored a true man with its highest honor, the Congressional Medal of Honor. Ed Kelly was and is an inspiration to Americans and our community alike because he met a challenge and was victorious. Though he did not get to share in the joy of victory, he, like the tragic hero, chose a nobler path. For greater love has no man than he laid down his life for another. We ask ourselves as we try to measure our lives with Ed Kelly's short span of time on the earth, have we done enough? Have we given enough of ourselves? Have we equaled the devotion to humanity that Jonah Edward Kelly gave? Only a true hero can say yes. Jonah Edward Kelly was and is our own definition of a true and tragic hero.
Thank you, Kaiser High School Concert Band. Uh, it is now my honor to introduce the guests of the 79th J. Edward Kelly Ceremony, beginning with our three nominees. With Drew Matlick this morning are his parents, Darren and Amber Matlick, his brother and his wife, Evan and Grace Matlick, grandfather, Med Matlick, and grandparents, Bob and Jane Pennington. With Logan Roadtruck this morning are his mother and father, Colin and Amber Roadtruck, his brother, Owen Roadtruck, grandparents, Keith and Diana Busevic, and Daryl and Colleen Roadtruck, aunts and uncles, Missy and Jason Dietrich, Celeste and Billy Schillingberg, Carrie Roadtruck, and Crystal and Sean Swick, as well as cousins, Brooke Dietrich, Tanner Dietrich, Alec Dietrich, Uriah Swick, and Isabella Schillingberg, and a friend of the family, Shirley Rinker. And with Jack Stanislazic this morning are his parents, Jeffrey and Allison Stanislazic, brother Deacon Stanislazic, grandparents, Kathleen Ebert and Barbara Stanislazic, aunts, Sonia Stanislazic, Kelly Stanislazic, Melissa Stanislazic, and Christy Yates. Uncles, Jay Stanislazic and Michael Stanislazic, as well as cousins, Alec Stanislazic, Logan Stanislazic, and Wyatt Yates. Also with us, with, excuse me, with us this morning, uh, as I say your name, if you would please stand, uh, President of the Kelly Society, Mr. Michael Staggers. Members of the Kelly Society, starting in 1952, Jennings Stickley. 1961, James Currier. 1964, Woodrow Kessiker. 1967, Larry Taylor. 1974, Robert McDonald. 1975, Robert Eagle. From 1978, Tim Schwanabart and Randy Cirillo. 1979, Clay Sprouse. Representing 1981, Jeffrey Kuhn. Representing 1983, Scott Robal and Jeff Kessiker. Representing 1985, Patrick Neald and Jeffrey Staggers. Representing 1989, John Staggers. 1992, Jeff Stanislazic. 1998, John Haynes Jr. Representing 2001, Jared Altabello. 2004, Matthew Altabello. Representing 2005 and already standing, Michael Staggers. Representing 2006, Chris Zaffron. 2008, Tyler Logston and Blake Mangold. 2010, Robert Del Signor. 2015, Ryan Streets. 2017, Caden Staggers. Representing 2018, Brady Hours. Representing 2020, Carlton Shoemaker. Representing 2022, all three of our candidates, Alex Stanislazic, Seth Ernest, and EJ Guy. And representing our candidates from last year, 2023, Anthony Mealy and Gabe Bryan. Thank you, gentlemen. Our representative presenting the award from the Loyal Order of the Moose, Mr. John Haynes Sr., is with us this morning. We'd also recognize, like to recognize our guests, West Virginia State Senator, Senator excuse me, Mr. Randy Smith, West Virginia State Delegates, Rick Hillenbrand and Gary Howe, Mineral County Commissioners, Dutch Staggs, Jerry Wisner, and Roger Leatherman, Representing ZMM Architecture, Allegra Enix. With us also this morning is retired Social Studies Supervisor for Allegheny County Public Schools, Mr. Dan Wetzel. We'd also like to extend a special welcome to our State Superintendent of Schools for the State of West Virginia, Michelle Blatt. Also with us this morning is Superintendent of Mineral County Schools, Mr. Troy Ravenscroft. Assistant Superintendent, Ms. Kelly Wilson. Elected Board of Education members. 
and representatives of Mineral County's Central Office, Director of Secondary Education, Kelly Haynes, Director of Curriculum, Robin McDowell, and our Attendance Director, Brandy Fisher. Also with us this morning are KHS Assistant Principals, Mrs. Christine Droppelman and Mrs. Alicia Dupuy. I'd also like to especially thank the staff of Kaiser High School as well as the students of Kaiser High School for your continued support of this program. Unfortunately, for the first time in the history of this award ceremony, we will have no representatives of the 78th Lightning Division, Ed Kelly's Band of Brothers. 25 years ago when I was a student at Kaiser High School, this front section in the center uh, would have been packed with members of the 78th who traveled from over 30 states to honor their fallen comrade. I received a message last year after the ceremony from the daughter of a member of the 78th who put it very succinctly when she said, and I quote, I told my children none of us would be here if it weren't for Ed Kelly. They traveled and attended this ceremony because they knew how important Staff Sergeant Kelly was to their very existence. We knew this day would come, uh, time doesn't stop, and it's an unfortunate reality that those men aren't with us or can't travel with us to be here. If you would, please join me in a moment of silence for the men of the 78th Lightning Division. Thank you. It is now my great honor to bring to the podium KHS alumnus and 2001 Kelly Award winner, Mr. Jared Altabello, who will introduce our speaker, Corporal Matthew Bradford. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. It's always great to be back for such a wonderful event. Um, congratulations, Drew, Logan, and Jack, and your families, um, well-deserved. It's my honor to introduce today's speaker, Corporal Matthew Bradford. He was born in Virginia, grew up in a small town in Kentucky, not bigger, much bigger than Kaiser. For high school, he moved back to Dinwiddie, Virginia, and at the beginning of his freshman year, the events of September 11, 2001, deeply affected and altered his future ambitions, leading him to enlist in the United States Marine Corps in September of 2005. Less than two years later, while proudly serving his country in Iraq, another event changed his life forever. It's a story of resilience, physical and men uh, mental strength, motivation, inspiration, service, and the true embodiment of a warrior's spirit. In fact, just nine months after learning to walk on his prosthetics, Matt walked 10 of the 14 miles of the Bataan Memorial Death March, an annual tribute, of, tribute event that he has since completed the entire distance. In 2018, he was recognized by uh, President Trump in the State of the Union Address for his resilient attitude. Matt travels the country sharing his life experiences and working with nonprofit organizations that focus on working with wounded service members. He believes that serving others is a way of giving back for those who served him while in recovery and not forgetting our veterans who had sacrificed so much for our country. I had the privilege of meeting Matt a little more than a year ago through a, uh, a mutual friend, First Sergeant, uh, United States Marine Corps First Sergeant Nick Lanier. Shortly thereafter, hearing more about his past and service mission, instantly thought, I instantly thought of this program and how it's a perfect venue for him to share. He's a world traveler, has hiked mountains, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, finished many half and full marathons, skydived and even surfed. As a man of faith and family, he and his wife Amanda celebrated 10 year anniversary recently. 12, so excuse me, 12, sorry. <laughs> Two more years. 12 year anniversary and he has three children, Nolan, Emma and Layla. Matt lives by the, the words, no legs, no vision, no problem. Again, it's a great honor to introduce my friend, Corporal Matthew Bradford, United States Marine Corps, retired. Thank you so much, Jared. Uh, and I want to thank Jared for, you know, mentioning my name for his parents and the hospitality, um, you know, letting me stay with them. 
uh, for the Kelly Society and for Kaiser High School and Jack, Logan, and Drew, congratulations. And um, I mean, your, your stories motivate the heck out of me and I wish I'd had a better childhood like y'all have. But, uh, and I also thank y'all very much for having easy names because if you notice, I'm blind and I don't have no notes up here, so it's easy to remember your name, so. But, uh, I, you know, it's, uh, I woke up this morning and I read, uh, you know, Staff Sergeant Kelly's Medal of Honor citation again, and it just, like, it, it motivates me to wake up every day, to go out and just live a little bit of the life and the legacy that he lived serving this country. And, you know, I woke up this morning and I read that and it gave me all the energy in the world to come stand in front of you all today. So I hope, especially the student body and for everyone in attendance today, like, give me that energy too, you know, because I, I have a story. I love sharing my story, but it's not so much about my story, but it's about those people in my life that's impacted me to get me where I am today. Uh, I do like to make a lot of jokes. I like to laugh because it's one of the things of life is you got to learn to laugh at things. You got to learn to deal with situations with a little smile on your face and push forward. And, and that's what's helped me get to where I am also. My name is Matthew Raffer. Like Jared mentioned, I served seven years in the United States Marine Corps. Um, you know, I, I had the motivation of watching nearly 3,000 Americans give their lives on one day in September, watching Americans leap for their lives, thinking that's the best way out of the Twin Towers of New York City. And I knew then that I knew what my purpose was in life. I knew that it was to serve this country. It was to give back. You know, I'm sure for a lot of you students in here today who don't know what you're gonna do next year in three years or four years or when you graduate high school, I think it's time for you to start setting down and, and going after those goals and those dreams, not letting the people around you, the naysayers, the critics, tell you, oh, you can't do that. That's not worth it. You know, it's your life, it's your dreams, go for it. You know, I stand in front of you today as a blind guy with no legs. As a third grader, I never wrote that on a piece of paper. You know, I want to be this when I grow up, but I tell you what, I love this life. You know, and, and no matter the limitations, the restrictions, the, the, whatever it is every day that I have to battle, like, it motivates me, it gives me energy, and it gives me the adrenaline to fight on every day. You know, because I see my injuries, and I use that as my daily drive. What's going to get me through today? You know, I'm a competitive person. I look at grabbing my prosthetics in the morning. I look at opening my eyes and not be able to see. And I'm like, you know that guy that pushed that button? You know, he knocked me down one day, but I got back up. I forgave, I, you know, I, I forgave him. I don't, I don't really think much about him, but I know that I'm probably living a better life today than he is, and that, that's how I live it. And I feel like the minute that I give up and the minute that I quit, the minute he wins. You know, and, and you think a lot about the military and you think a lot about, you know, you probably, if I was you all, the students here, I would read Sassar and Kelly's Medal of Honor citation every morning, either Googling it or when I walk into school. And you probably think to yourself, oh, I don't, I can't do that. I don't know how he had the drive to do that. But when you're put in those situations, you know, it shows you the true love that a brother is willing to sacrifice his life for those to your left and right. The true love someone has for their country. Knowing that if I don't do this, it's, it might hurt, it might risk my life. But you know what? My brothers are going to walk away from this. They're going to go home and start their lives and their families. That selfless sacrifice, we're all capable of doing it. We're all willing to put our life in risk when we're put in those situations. All of us. You know, you might not think it today, you might not think it tomorrow, but we all are. You know, it's all of us. But I would read that every morning and I would use that to get me through the day, to get me through the, through the high school days, through my life. Use that motivation and that drive. And these three nominees up here, you know, we're all about looking up to people. We're all about using uh, you know, motivators in our life to get us through the day. I have mine that I look up to that, that help me get to where I am. We all need those people in our lives. You know, the principals, the, the, the teachers that you have here at this school, 
Use their words, their wisdom, their leadership to help get you where you are, to help you get through those tough situations. Because we can't do this alone. We need everyone. I served, as I mentioned, seven years in the United States Marine Corps. I joined September 2005. I stood on the yellow footprints of Paris Island, South Carolina, recruit training depot. And the guys in, I stood next to were guys that I would get to know very well. They would deploy with me. You know, I learned really early on that the I and me in the vocabulary was replaced with the we and us. Because we can't do nothing alone. We need, the, we need a team. You know, I read a book by Joe Theismann that said, team, together everyone achieves more. You know, and I've learned through life that no matter how much I think or, you know, how much we think that we can get through life alone, we really can't. I'm comfortable with putting my left hand out and putting it on someone's shoulder when I need help. Sitting down with someone and saying, hey, I need assistance. I'm okay with that. And you know what, going through my Marine Corps training and then a year later deploying to Iraq, I was only a couple years older than some of the seniors in here. 20 years old, I was deployed to Iraq, Al Anbar province, very dangerous, one of the most dangerous provinces in the world. We faced constant firefights, IED explosions, snipers, all this stuff every day. You know, when you look to the person to your left and the right, and you honestly didn't know if they were going to make it home, but you love them. You're willing to, you know, do whatever it takes to get back with them. You know, my deployment wasn't much. I was doing my job. My story, January 18, 2007, is kind of where my detour in life happened. Like, none of us in this room right now know what's next, what direction God sends us in. You know, we kind of find out, some of us find out the hard way, some of us find out, like, why am I going down this path? What's next? When's the light at the end of the tunnel? You know, I thought my life was serving in the Marines for 20 years, deploying as many times as possible, and then I stepped in the wrong spot at the wrong time. An IED that was in a pipe underneath the road, and as I looked down, I saw the command wires going inside that pipe, and it exploded directly underneath me. At first, when I... At first, when I woke up from a three-week coma to find out my injuries, I, I didn't want to live. I didn't want, I didn't want this life. But it was those Marines, those nurses, those doctors, the visitors in my hospital room that came in my room every day. Those people helped get me out of those dark spots, get me into a better space, understanding that there is light at the end of the tunnel to help me realize that, you know what, maybe God placed me down this path in life because my purpose is not to go to war, to deploy. My purpose is to go in hospital rooms, to speak to students, to share with them that no matter what struggle you face with, no matter if it's an amputation, if you're burned, if you got a headache, if your arm hurts, whatever it is, it's, it's, we can overcome it. It's not the end of the world. You know, and life will throw you so many different obstacles. You know, you could lay down, you can quit, or you can get up and you could push forward. You know, Jarrett mentioned earlier about the Baton Death March. You know, as I mentioned, I like to laugh and joke, and, you know, I, I did the Baton Death March in 2009, but by 2008, I literally put my foot in my mouth, uh, literally, literally and figuratively, because um, I told my physical therapist that I want to do the Baton Death March, and I was hoping he would forget, but, you know, I went to the blind rehab center. I was gone for six months, and uh, I got back, and he told me, he was like, hey, go walk. You're going to go walk 14 miles in eight weeks. Oh, oh goodness. Like, like, I just really learned how to walk six months ago, you know? It's a... And I, and I went out there, and I walked 10 of the 14 miles, and I remember one of the guys walked over to me and says, 10 miles, that's it? And I looked at him like, you tried doing this with no legs and can't see. And he just kind of turned and walked away, and I'm like, I didn't even realize I said that. I think I was just so exhausted that anything just came out. But what I thought to myself later on that, man, those last four miles, like, I've never quit. I've never fell out on anything. Like, if it was a run, if it was a, a hike, whatever it was, I never quit on anything. And somebody came to me and says, oh, well, you've got the perfect excuse now. Like, like I, my amputations is not an excuse. It's not something that is going to stop me from living life. I told myself early through my recovery that despite my amputations, despite my blindness, I'm going to live a normal life. These things are not going to hold me back and stop me from living it. And I used that last four miles that I, that I quit on as my motivation not only for life, but for the next 10 years until I finally conquered those 14 miles. And in between that time, it was 
Spartan races, it was marathons. It was understanding that if I want to put my body through these kind of obstacles, if I want to put myself through these kind of obstacles, I'm going to have to train. I'm going to have to condition. You know, it's just like anything in, in life. If whatever you want to put your mind to, you're going to have to work for it. You're going to have to work hard for it sometimes. Sometimes you're going to have to work so hard that you want to quit. But you realize the harder you work and the more you work and the more you put towards it, it's going to make it so much easier. You know, it's not so much about the start. It's not so much about the finish. It's about what's in the middle. It's the journey. You know, as they always say, it's not a sprint, it's a marathon. You know, I look at this life that I've been given. You know, ultimately, when I got injured and I had all those Marines come in my room and I had all those people come talk to me, I was in a very dark spot, as I mentioned. They helped me get out of that spot. And they also helped get in my mind that, man, I, want, I could do that. Why can't I walk into a room? You know, why can't I continue wearing the uniform? And as I mentioned earlier, I had many people come to me, oh, just get out of the Marines. You, you, you know, you'll make more money as a veteran, or you'll do this, and you'll do this. Why do you want to stay in? First of all, anybody in here that knows anything about the military, you don't join the military for money. We don't get paid very much. But it was the brotherhood. It was the love. It was the being proud, the pridefulness that I had of putting that uniform on and honoring everyone who has worn that uniform, who has sacrificed for that uniform, who has bled in that uniform. That's what gave me pride every day when I woke up. And I focused on that. I focused on learning how to walk. I went to the blind rehab center. I even built a birdhouse at the blind rehab center. And I don't know about you Votech kids in here, table saw is pretty intimidating when you can see. Try doing it when you can't see. But I didn't lose any fingers. So, and I even got a certificate saying I graduated from the blind rehab center. I don't, I don't understand. I guess that means I'm actually blind. I don't know. But, uh, but you know, I, I, I set these goals in my head. I didn't listen to the people that was telling me the other, do this, do that. I used that as my motivation, my drive. That was my discipline to get through because I knew I wanted to re-enlist. In April 7, 2010, I re-enlisted. I was the first blind double in the history of the Marine Corps to do that. Matt, where do you want to go? I want to go help the wounded warriors. I want to go be around those to let them know that no matter what they deal with in life, it's not over. You know, and it's, uh, and I think, you know, that part, it gave me the chance to finally call it quits on the Marine Corps in 2012. I had a chance to go back to Iraq in 2011 on a closure trip. And it helped me understand that no matter what in life, you know, for a Marine, you're always a Marine. And that gave me my motivation. And I got out in 2012 and moved back to Kentucky and uh, started taking classes at the University of Kentucky. But you know, through it all, you know, I've learned that yes, life is tough. Life will throw you curveball after curveball. You know, I've learned every morning when you wake up that no matter what, you're gonna face those difficulties. But I've also learned that to have people in my corner, you know, and not to give up when things get tough. You know, looking back on this life, in January 18, 2007, that IED took so much from me, took my legs, took my eyesight, scars all over my body, never seen my wife, never seen my kids. It took all that from me, and, and, and every day I wake up, I ask God, why did he do this to me? But then I think back to the last 17 years. I think about you all in this room, hoping that when you all walk out of this auditorium that you're gonna be like, you know what? I'm gonna go ace this test. I'm gonna go do this. I'm gonna be the best football player, the best baseball player, the best basketball player, the best person this school has to offer. I am going to change everything right now. I wanna make sure that I turn this C into an A because I think these three nominees up here, we all need that right now. And I think all of, all of us, even I, we should look up to those three exceptional kids. And you know, it's, it's, it's proud to like sit here, to shake their hands, to talk to them. They're half my age, but you know what? That they motivate me to go do, do more, to be better. I think we all need those kind of people in our lives. You know, and I look back 17 years, the lessons that I've learned, the good times, the bad times, you know, many times wanting to quit, wanting to give up. God, why did you do this to me? And then I think about 
that detour that God placed me on. It led me down so many different curves. It was like driving to West Virginia from Kentucky. Up and down mountains to the left and to the right over rivers. And my goodness, like I felt like I was going to space sometimes. But ultimately, it led me to where I am right now in front of you. Married for 12 years. I have three kids. You know, I live my life. Somebody asked me one time, Matt, I don't know how you stay so motivated, how you stay so positive. Because if, if I was in your position, I'd much rather be uh, burned than blind. And this guy was burned over 70% of his body. And that really rang with me, and I thought to myself, if this guy's going to come to therapy and wake up every day with a smile on his face, and he'll joke on you, and he'll, he'll, he'll laugh, smile, what do I got to complain about? You know, we all deal with stuff, but no one's stuff is bigger than someone else's. But if we come together and we share our problems and we open up to each other, we could, we could deal with it. We could become a better person, a better group of individuals, a better community. And you know what? I, I just I have that in my mind. I'd much rather be burned than blind. You know, yeah, like people are like, oh, I'm sorry for what happened to you. Oh, yeah, I had nothing to be sorry about. Just like Cesar and Kelly. Like, he gave his life for this nation, this country, for his brothers. You know what? I lost my legs and my eyesight in war because I love this country. Because I love this, love the brothers to my left and right. You know, I don't know many of, or all of you all, majority of you all, but I love you all because we're all Americans. We're all here together. We're all fighting the same fight. And together, we could fight it together. Then we could overcome it and we could battle through it. So I love each and every one of you all. And I hope not only you three nominees in the front row, but all of you all strive for more, strive to be better. I tell my 12 year old daughter this all the time. And I know a lot of times she's like, oh, I'm embarrassed, Dad. Don't, don't, don't talk to me like that, you know? But it's like, we all need to understand what we want to do in life. And we all have goals and we all have dreams. But a lot of times, and even I was this way, somebody told me, you can't do this. No, don't worry about it. Like, it's not possible. I would just throw away my goals and my dreams because they told me it wasn't possible. It's your life. You only live it once. Take advantage of every opportunity you're given. I'm sure your principals, your teachers here at Kaiser will do whatever it takes, just like Staff Sergeant Kelly going above and beyond. I'm sure they will go above and beyond to get you where you need to be to do what you want to do. You know, one of the many things I've learned those 17 years when I was in rehab, it's the attitude, it's the mindset. You know, if you walk into a situation, if you walk into a classroom, a sporting event, or whatever it is, with a negative mindset and you're automatically like, oh, you know, especially for the, you know, the athletes. Oh, that team's strong. Look at that. They're big. They're strong. They hit the ball pretty good. We don't say the chance. If you walk into that with that mindset, that negativity, then you already lost. You already failed. You got to walk into every situation with a positive mindset. Be like, you know what? Let's go. You might be bigger than me. You might be stronger than me, but let's do this. And you know what? Hey, if you lose, you learn. And now you're gonna, you know what to do the next time you go back. You know how to beat this guy. You know how to win. You know, as long as you get better, 1%, 10%, 99%, every day, just work on getting better. And you know, I don't know, I hope there's some readers in here. I love to read. Uh, yes, I'm blind, but I love to read. Uh, there's one book called Make Your Bed by Admiral McRaven. And it talks about the importance of honestly just making your bed in the morning because that's the first task that you accomplish every day. And when you go through your day, and it might be a good day, it might be a bad day, but you come home to a freshly made bed, and you get to lay down, you put your head on the pillow, and you close your eyes, that day's done. Nothing else to worry about. Let's focus on tomorrow. What did I get through today? What did I learn today that can make me a better person tomorrow? Through my recovery, I, I learned that I might have a bad day, because we all have bad days, but not letting that one bad day turn into two bad days. Definitely not letting that bad day turn into three bad days. But you know what, going to rehab with a smile on your face and understanding that, you know what, not letting the challenges defeat you. My therapist told me one time, he's like, Matt, you don't realize this, but every time you come into therapy, you roll in in your wheelchair, you get on the mat, you put your legs on, you stand up and you walk out. It's like, oh, cool, you know, that's what I'm supposed to do, right? But he was like, you got those young amputees over here, still trying to figure out life, 
what's next? You know, why, why am I alive? And then they see a blind double MT up on their prosthetics walking out with a smile on their face to give them hope, to give them the courage that, you know what, if he could do it, then I can do it. You know, in the, the Marine Corps, I learned real quickly that lead by example and how important leadership truly is. It's not so much getting in somebody's face and screaming at them and yelling at them, but it's setting down and it's sharing your stories, your experiences. It's also getting up every morning and going to work, putting your head down. Oh, I got a test today. Then you know what? I'm not going to get on social media tonight. I'm not going to watch TV. I'm going to get my book out and I'm going to go study. I'm going to get a book out. I'm going to read because I'm going to learn something new today. You know, and then I think one of the most, uh, you know, one of the most important things that I've learned through this is the, you know, it's interesting, you know, learning how to walk with two prosthetics. You know, I thought I, I thought it was easy, but you know what? I, I I wanted to walk. I didn't want to quit, but I learned that walking on two prosthetic legs and and also being blind is very tough. Like I was scissor walking, I was tripping over my own feet, bouncing off the left wall to the right wall. And, and I don't know if y'all have noticed, but my face is kind of my moneymaker. So I didn't want to fall, I didn't want to face plant. You know, I didn't want to break my nose or bust my mouth or whatever. And my physical therapist stopped me one day and says, Matt, whatever you do in life, just put one foot in front of the next. Just walk. You know, I'll never let you fall. And one of my most favorite quotes is a journey of a thousand, mi- a journey of a thousand miles begins with one simple step. Life, one simple step. We can't think about, you know, 10 years from now. It's good to think about it, but we need to focus on right now and this moment. What are we going to get today that's going to help us in the next hour, help us the next day? By just putting one foot in front of the next, focusing on what's next. That's life. Like, again, we're not guaranteed tomorrow or next week, next month. We're guaranteed right now in this moment. And you know what? I almost lost my life on one wrong step. But now these last 18 years, I've taken advantage of it because not only for the veterans, you know, but for for you all, for the students, the 16, 17, 18 year olds in this room, you know, I'm 37 years old, but I'm retired. Like I, I, all I could do is this right here and go live by example. You all are the future, you know, the future of this country, the future leaders. You know, what kind of life do you want to live? Very important question. Because, you know, we need young, inspiring leaders. You know, there's a lot of politicians in here. We need young, inspiring politicians. You know, I've learned in life to serve and give back to those who've given to me to get me out of those dark spots. You know, they've taught me a lot about life, how to lead. But the most important part is just you know what, just to serve, serve your community, to be a good person, to be kind, to be caring, to be compassionate. I'll share this one story with you and then I'll uh, probably go sit down because my legs are starting to hurt. But uh, that's my second excuse, you know, so one more and then I'll probably just do a bunch of push-ups. When I was leaving Chicago on an airplane, the lady that was driving the bus, she was told us, Whatever you all do in life, just be kind, compassionate, and caring to others, because you never know what someone else is dealing with. And I think back, not only 17 years, but about life. You know, the, the word respect, kindness, caring, like, a lot of it is not, it's not in the vocabulary today. A lot of it is. You know, somebody told me one time the word you know, the character of a person, that they'll go to a school, a high school, and if they see a piece of trash on the floor, they'll sit there and watch to see how many kids or students or teachers walks by that piece of trash before someone picks it up. And it it shows a lot about your character because, you know, for, for your high school students here, your high school, that's your school. Be proud of that high school. You should want to pick up that trash. It doesn't make you less of a person, it makes you better of a person. And that says a lot about your character. And you know, when you think about leadership, it's all about the character and the person you are. And it all starts with being kind and caring and compassionate to those around you. You know, opening doors, 
yes sir, no sir, being respectful. That's what it's all about. You know, I, I love my life and I lived a great life. And you know, I hope to go out and I hope to inspire and motivate more people. And I don't regret anything I've ever done in life. I look to my, the World War II veterans, to the Staff Sergeant Ed Kelly's, and, and I'm just honored. You know, unfortunately, a lot of them are not here today. But, you know, I've had the opportunity to sit down with them in rooms and talk with them, share stories, to hear their own stories. American heroes, the greatest generation. And although it's been 80 years since then, but you know what? This world would be a different place today if it wasn't for the wars in Europe and for the wars in the Pacific. You know, so I pray and I thank God every day for those soldiers, those Marines, those sailors, those airmen, the Coast Guard. Space Force wasn't in existence then, so I can't thank them. But you know what? War comes at a heavy price. But you know what? And less than 1% of us even serve this nation. But I tell you what, the guys that I served with, I would go back to war with them every day of the week. And, you know, I'm sure if Cesar and Kelly was here, he would go back to war knowing what happened to him. Because the love and the brotherhood that we share over there. You know, I, I hope that when you all walk out of here today, that you all have a different mindset, a different focus. Go read that Medal of Honor citation and look at life a little differently and figure out and understand how you could be a better person. Because you know, at one time, Cesar and Kelly was sitting where you're sitting. He was going through the same high school classes and living the same life you are today. Something happened in 1941 that made him take that detour in life and go down a different road. But you know what? When you walk away from here, be that better person. Make a difference in someone else's life. And I thank each of you all today. It's an honor to be here. You know, I love what you all do to honor and remember Sassar and Kelly. And you know what? Thank you again. And uh, God bless each and every one of you all. Thank you. Sorry. No, you're good. I'd now like to welcome to the podium for the presentation of awards, Mr. John Haynes, Sr. Thank you, Dr. Ravenscroft. Good morning, everyone. I'm once again honored to present the Kelly Award. This award was the idea of three members of the Kaiser Moose Lodge in 1946, and the Moose Lodge has been a part of it ever since. Congratulations again to our nominees and to their parents for the love and support that you've shown them over the years that have brought them to this day in their lives. The Moose Lodge presents a wristwatch, a bull of a wristwatch, to each nominee. The face of the watch has the likeness of a soldier, and through the center of it, a lightning bolt. And that is emblematic of the 78th Lightning Division. We had this watch made especially for this program. Well, it's now time to announce our winner. Gentlemen, if you would please stand. This day and this honor is something that I'm sure you will cherish for the rest of your lives. And on behalf of the Kaiser Moose Lodge members and officers, I am honored to get to announce this year's winner. The 79th Jonah Edward Kelly Award winner, Logan Rotary. Good 
Good morning. I cannot express enough how grave an honor it is to have been nominated for such a prestigious award alongside my fellow peers, Drew Matlick and Jack Stanislawsik. Congratulations to you both. You've been great friends with me since middle school and there's no one I'd rather share this stage with. I'd like to take a moment to thank the men and women that have kept the Jonah Edward Kelly program a tradition here at Kaiser High School. Thank you to all current and former veterans and service members, Moose Lodge 662, American Legion Boyce Hauser Post 41, President of the Kelly Society, Mr. Staggers, and other members of the society, guest speaker Corporal Bradford, Mineral County Board of Education, Superintendent Ravenscroft, Assistant Superintendent Wilson, Principal Dr. Ravenscroft, Assistant Principals Ms. Dupuy and Ms. Droppelman, along with Ms. Rotruck and volunteers. Today we are here to honor a model U.S. citizen, Jonah Edward Kelly. Jonah Edward Kelly was known for his extraordinary integrity, relentless determination, outstanding character, and excellence in academics and athletics. To have been mentioned in the same breath as Jonah Edward Kelly is the greatest honor one could receive. His actions, along with the 78th Lightning Division, are those of great admirability. Little did he know his actions would have an everlasting effect that would impact generations to come. Jonah Edward Kelly sacrificed his life and posthumously received the highest level of honor a military personnel could receive. Even though he was doing of the utmost hero heroic actions, the fame and glory were undoubtedly the last thing on his mind. Jonah Edward Kelly's humbleness was unquestioned and is an example of what we should all strive for. Jonah was a staunch example of integrity and doing what is right when nobody is watching. The patriotism that Jonah Edward Kelly, United States veterans, and the active service men and women show every day is what gives me the utmost pride for our amazing country. To be recognized with this award for displaying characteristics of integrity, leadership, and humility is an amazing feat that I could have I could not have accomplished without these wonderful people guiding me in the correct direction. Coach Steven and Coach Robal, thank you for emphasizing the significance of integrity both on and off the field, promoting a culture of respect and sportsmanship among teammates and opponents alike. Beyond athletics, you have served as outstanding role models, modeling the qualities of leadership, dedication, and perseverance to win, lose, or draw. Miss Umstock. Thank you for providing me with the resources and encouragement to continue to pursue higher education, equipping me with the knowledge and skills to thrive in this world. Even though my, math, my heart is in mathematics and science, you help me to gain a certain respect for English and writing. Without you and your lessons, this speech would sound as if a third grader had written it. <laughs> Nana and Pap, thank you for first introducing me to church life and the everlasting love that God shows. You have been my biggest supporters, whether it be athletics or academics. Nana, I will always love your cookies, even though it was rough through wrestling season. <laughs> Mimi and Pat, thank you for all the adventures filled with everlasting memories. You were the first to show me my true love for the outdoors, that life is an adventure, and the importance of having fun as a family. Owen, thank you for being my built-in best friend and being the person I can always come to talk to no matter what. Mom. Thank you for being my rock. Without you guiding me in this world, I would not be standing up here today. You have shown me how to be a great person by leading through your example. Last but not least, Dad. Thank you for being my lifelong coach. Although we butt heads at times, you always push me to be the absolute best at anything I do, and I'm forever grateful for this. Classmates and community members, let us challenge ourselves to emulate the characteristics bodied by Jonah Edward Kelly. He exemplified courage in the face of adversity, selflessness and service to others, the integrity in, his, in every action. By modeling these traits, we not only honor the legacy of those who have served, but also uphold the highest standards of character and citizenship. Let us strive to be beacons of courage, selflessness, and integrity in our daily lives, inspiring the, uh, others to follow suit and fostering a culture of honor and excellence within our community. Thank you and God bless. Drew Matlick. Thank you very much. Good morning. 
I want to start by saying what an honor it is to be nominated for such a prestigious award. I am grateful and humbled to be able to represent someone who made the ultimate sacrifice. There is no deed more noble than giving your own life for a cause you believe in. I also would like to congratulate Logan and Jack on being nominated. You would be hard pressed to find two other candidates from any Kaiser High School senior class that are as deserving as you guys. You both are the embodiment of a Kelly Award nominee, and I know God has big plans for your lives. I'd like to welcome all veterans and current servicemen and women along with their families. State Superintendent Blatt, Senator Smith, Delegate Hillenbrand, Delegate Howe, Commissioner Staggs, Commissioner Wisner, Commissioner Leatherman, and our guest speaker, Corporal Bradford, and all other distinguished guests. I believe it is also important to recognize the people that made this ceremony possible. I want to thank the Kaiser Moose Lodge 662, President Staggers, and the rest of the Kelly Society, American Legion Boyce Hauser Post 41, Superintendent Ravenscroft and the Mineral County Board of Education, Principal Dr. Ravenscroft, Assistant Principals Mrs. Droppelman and Mrs. Dupuy, Ms. Roadtruck, and all other volunteers. If it wasn't for the hard work and dedication that you all have to keep this Kaiser High School tradition alive, the memory and sacrifice of Jonah Edward Kelly would be lost. Last but not least, I want to thank the members of the 78th Lightning Division and their families. You all truly were the greatest generation, and I pray that our, your sacrifice for our freedom will never be forgotten. We are here today to honor and remember Staff Sergeant Jonah Edward Kelly. Ed Kelly was born and raised amidst the same mountains and valleys that we are blessed to call home today. During his time at Kaiser High School, he grew into a young man that displayed the utmost leadership, selflessness, determination, love of country, and excellence in the classroom and on the field. At the young age of 21 years old, Kelly did what many men could only dream of doing. He died a hero's death in order to save his friends and his country. We can only imagine the impact that this had, not only on the outcome of the war, but also on the lives of his fellow soldiers and their families. He showed a true love for this country by doing what was necessary to win the fight, regardless of the cost to his own safety. It was said by General Eisenhower that Kelly's actions shortened the war by several months. His heroics led to him being the only Congressional Medal of Honor recipient from the Lightning Division or, or from Kaiser High School. It is my hope that as this tradition continues and we continue to honor three seniors of Kaiser High School every year, that we would remember why we do it. I think far too often we hear the name Ed Kelly and we just think of it as an award. We worry about what we need to do to be recognized. I think we can all see that this misses the point entirely. It's not about what I need to do, but the kind of person I need to be. President John F. Kennedy once said, as we express our gratitude, we must never forget that the highest appreciation is not to utter words, but to live by them. That is the only way to truly honor Ed Kelly's memory and the cause that he died for. Ed Kelly was blessed to have many mentors during his time at Kaiser High School that helped shape him into the man that we are honoring today. I've also been lucky enough to have many role models that have helped me get to where I am today. I would like to take some time now to recognize some of them. Coach Haynes. You taught me the true meaning of Kaiser pride and showed me how to give 100% of myself for my team. More importantly than that, you believed in me when no one else did, and for that I thank you. Coach Fury, throughout these past two years, you have taught me a lot, not just about basketball, but about life. Thank you for always holding me accountable and making sure that I brought the best version of myself to practice every single day. The lessons you taught me will carry with me the rest of my life. I would also like to thank the rest of the basketball coaching staff for their time and dedication that they put in every day to make me and my teammates better. Jay Courier, you're not just a great coach, but a great person. I could always count on you to have a smile on your face and a kind word to say even when things didn't go my way. Thank you for teaching me the game of basketball and helping me learn to love it. I know I can always come to you if I need anything. For that and countless other reasons, I thank you. Coach Blow, you've not only been a great golf coach, but a true friend. You help make the most frustrating sport fun every single day. I see how hard you work and how much you dedicate yourself to your coaching. Thank you for giving us every opportunity to, to succeed on the golf course and in life. I also was blessed to have many mentors in the classroom that helped me succeed. I want to give a special thank you to Mrs. Umstop for always pushing me to be the best version of myself I could be and expecting more out of me than I did. Every student needs a teacher like you in their lives. Mimi and Pappy Bob, thank you for the amount of support and love you've shown me my entire life. You all never missed a game or an event. Even on my bad days, you both were still proud of me. There's never been a day where I haven't felt loved or blessed to be your baby grandson. Pap, thank you for, for being an example of how to love my family and love God with everything I am. I don't know anyone who works as hard as you do. I'll always remember the lessons you've taught me and the love and support you've shown me. Evan, although we fight sometimes, I'm grateful for the friendship that we have. Thank you for teaching me how to golf and always pushing me to be a better person. 
I know God has big plans for you, and I can't wait to be in your corner cheering you on every step of the way. Mom, I truly thank God for every day for putting you in my life. From waking up early every morning before school to make me breakfast, to staying up late to make sure I get home at night, you are always there for me. My entire life, I've known nothing but love and support, and I owe all of that to you. I know you'll support me in whatever I choose to do with my life, and I can never thank you enough for that. Dad, from the time I was a little boy, I've seen how hard you have worked to provide for our family. Most people don't realize the long, hard hours you have dedicated to get to where you are. More importantly than working hard, you have instilled in me a love for Jesus that outweighs everything else. Thank you for being the best coach, fan, and mentor I've ever had. Lastly, I want to thank God for blessing me in more ways than I could ever describe. At the end of the day, all of this is for his glory. Thank you and God bless. Jack Stanislawczyk. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm honored to stand before you today as an Ed Kiley nominee. Congratulations to both Drew Matlick and Logan Roadtruck, two of my best friends for being nominated as well. I cannot think of two other men more fitting to share this great honor with. I would like to begin by first taking a moment to recognize the 78th Lightning Division, especially Mr. Stuart Brandau, who is with us in spirit from his home in Woodbridge, New Jersey. We love you, Stu. All veterans and active service members, guest speaker, Corporal Matthew Bradford, President Michael Staggers, and other members of the Ed Kelly Society, Kaiser Moose Lodge 662, the, Amer the American Legion Boys Houser Post 41, State Superintendent Michelle Blatt, State Senator Randy Smith, State Delegates Rick Hillenbrand and Gary Howe, County Commissioners Dutch Staggs, Jerry Wisner, and Roger Leatherman, Superintendent Ravenscroft, Assistant Superintendent Wilson, Board of Education members, Principal Dr. Ravenscroft, Assistant Principals Ms. Depoy and Mr. Oppelman, Kaiser High School staff, administration, and student body, Ms. Carrie Roadtruck, along with her volunteers, families, friends, and all other distinguished guests. It is thanks to all of you that we are able to keep this memorable tradition alive. We gather here today not to celebrate us, but rather to honor the life of Staff Sergeant Jonah Edward Kelly. Ed Kelly was a man of integrity, character, determination, that gave the ultimate sacrifice in the quest of protecting the end goal, American freedom. It was through this leadership and bravery that he not only held Kesternick, but single-handedly shortened the war. I think we have all heard the saying, Ordinary people do extraordinary things, and Ed Kelly truly personifies this statement. A true hero indeed. In our lives, more often than not, we tend to look to athletes, maybe famous actors, or even prominent political figures as role models and those that we choose to emulate. However, by doing this, I feel we sometimes mistake the forest for the trees, so to speak, and often underappreciate the real heroes we have we have all around us in our everyday lives. These heroes frequently show up in many forms, teachers, advisors, coaches, friends and family, or maybe even someday just a stranger with an encouraging word or a smile. Unfortunately, we rarely take the time to get a chance to say thank you to these people. I would like to take a few moments at this time to say thank you to the heroes in my life. I would like to thank all of my teachers. Throughout my education career, I've been blessed with many amazing ones. Without the help and guidance of teachers of the likes of Ms. Umstadt, Mr. Perano, and Mr. Whiteman, and, and along with my intern teachers, Ms. Leslie and Ms. Reagan Knotts, I know I would not be the student nor young man I am today. I would especially like to thank Ms. Stephanie Stevens. You've been with me through all of it, from third grade multiplication ice cream parties to always, no matter what in high school, making sure I was taking your class. I appreciate you for always being on me to take your class because it would, without your help, I would never have known that my calling in life was the education route, and I thank you immensely. If I can be half the teacher and person that you are to me in my life, I now will not only be a successful educator, but a teacher that everyone loves. While I'm at it, I would like to thank her husband, Coach Steven, and all other fo football coaches for constantly pushing me to be the best version of myself on and off the field. 
It is thanks to you that I can continue my athletic career at Fairmont State and play the sport of football that I love. I hope your phone is always open because heaven knows I will definitely need to be calling. I would like to thank Coach Haynes, Coach Jay Courier, and all other basketball coaches for all the moments that you helped create with the sport I first fell in love with. A very special thank you to two coaches that have made a major impact on my life and Coach Fury and Coach Liller. If anyone would ever question to be an amazing coach, but an even better human being, look no further than these two men. From many time calls and advice to so many laughs and memories, you've both changed my life for the better, and I'm so unbelievably grateful to call you both coaches and friends. But I'm excited to see and continue to see what, what this spring has in one last go about on the track. Thank you to my church family for helping instill my faith and love of God. My sincerest thank yous go to both Ms. Kelly Kuhn and Mr. Jeff Kuhn. From snack runs after basketball games, courtesy of a great week of Kelly Kuhn, to stepping up and teaching our confirmation class, thank you both for everything you do for myself and our parish. To my aunts, uncles, grandparents, and cousins, seeing you all here today is nothing short of amazing. You are here at every scholastic event, sporting event, and achievement that I've ever been a part of, and it's a blessing to have you here. You all are the most loving, caring, supportive group of people I could have and the best chain crew around. Thank you for always being in my corner. My brother Deacon, whew, there's not enough time today to talk about you, is there? Whew. You're a smart, strong, and loving brother. I thank you for always being my biggest supporter in everything I do. I don't say it enough, but I love you, buddy. My mom, we think scarily alike at times, and I still don't know if it's good or bad, I cannot thank you enough for all the hard work that you have done behind the scenes for our family. From always coming home to prepared meals to sacrificing your time and effort for Deke and I, I cannot thank you enough, and I cannot think of a better mother than you. Lastly, my dad. Everyone always says that we look alike when you were my age. Man, you were one lucky guy. <laughs> from thousands of miles on your car, from driving me to sporting events to the long nights of helpful conversations and study sessions, I can never thank you enough for anything. No matter what, Dad, just remember what your old pal said. Boy, you've got a friend in me. Just to conclude, as I stated earlier, Ed Kelly was a man of character, integrity, and determination. I can assure you that standing before you today, this experience is beyond humbling, and to be a representative of what this man's life was and what he stood for is something with me that I will carry with me for the rest of my life. It certainly goes without saying, but I will say it anyway. None of this would be possible without our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to go, who goes all the glory and honor. With that, I would like to say thank you, stay safe, God bless America, and may God bless all of you. Thank you. Please welcome to the podium for the presentation of the scholarship. President Michael Stagger. Good morning. Today it is my extreme honor to present the J. Edward Kelly Memorial Trust Scholarship to these three young men. The scholarship is the culmination of 79 years worth of generosity and a desire to continue to remember and recognize a lasting impact created by one of Kaiser's own as well as the legacy of an entire division of, an Ameri of American heroes. From the original winner, Bob Dorsey, receiving the Ed Kelly wristwatch, to pens, identification bracelets, and finally to scholarships, plaques, and medallions, the awards history has taken many different forms through the years. Today, these boys will be part of another change in the history of the award. For the first time, the scholarship value being awarded is $9,000. With an ever-changing economy and cost of furthering one's ed education increasing, we felt it was time to increase our amount as well. I am proud to announce that, as has been tradition ever since a $100 scholarship was awarded, Drew, Jack, and Logan have agreed to share the scholarship equally, regardless of the eventual winner. As a result of their decision, which is a direct reflection of the character that each boy possesses, each nominee will receive a $3,000 scholarship from the J. Edward Kel Kelly Memorial Trust. This trust is a direct result of the legacy of the Brothers at Arms of Jonah Edward Kelly himself. The 78th Lightning Division will forever be a part of our program and our community. Without their financial support, we would not be able to provide scholarships at the current level. 
They made a decision years ago to transfer the 78th Division Veterans Association Trust Fund to the J. Edward Kelly Society. Today, that fund is now the J. Edward Kelly Memorial Trust Fund. To further illustrate that generosity exhibited by so many of these amazing men, the Ke Kelly Society received word over a year ago that we would be receiving a donation from the estate of the late Mr. Basil Shook, a member of the 78th Lightning Division. The amount donated exceeded over $122,000. His donation, along with the countless others from the members of the 78th, make it possible for this scholarship to be awarded every spring. We want to publicly thank Basil Shook and his family for their generosity and the desire they had to make sure this was added to the trust fund. At this time, I would like each of you to come and receive a plaque that memorializes the event today and the scholarship that you will be receiving in remembrance of the 78th Lightning Division. Mr. Drew Matlett. Mr. Logan Rocha. Mr. Jack Stanislaus. Congratulations, Drew, Jack, and Logan. Good luck in all that you do. We will be rooting for you. Thank you. I'd like to thank our distinguished guests for their attendance today, for our students, for your wonderful behavior, and for our, especially to our speaker, Corporal Matthew Bradford, for your speech today. This does conclude our 79th Jonah Edward Kelly ceremony. I would ask that our students please stay seated until you're dismissed to go to the buses, and thank you all for attending. Thank you. Thank you.